So as I release this video, Apple has just released the public beta of iOS 26. And if you have a compatible device, it means that you can try the brand new version of Apple's operating system for yourself a good couple of months ahead of the public release in September. And if that's something that you're looking at doing, I've got 10 things that I think you should check out first once you've installed the new software. Okay, let's get into it. Before we get into the video properly, a quick word about the public beta. First of all, this is only compatible with the devices that you can see on screen now. So that's the second generation iPhone SE and newer, or the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro models and newer. That does mean that if you're using something like the iPhone 10, 10s, or 10R, unfortunately, you won't be able to upgrade to iOS 26. Now, although this isn't a developer beta, it's a public one, it is still a beta. So by its very nature, it's a preview of software that hasn't yet been released to the general public. I would really recommend that if you've got a spare compatible iPhone lying around, you install the software on that instead of the one that you use every day. Or if you don't have a spare device, I would probably wait until the second release, which usually comes a couple of weeks after the first. That second release is typically more stable because Apple has had a bit of time to gather feedback and squash some of the early bugs. Hey, Editing Tom here. Now, a point that I forgot to include in the main script, in order for you to see the public beta in your phone settings, which we're gonna cover in just a couple of seconds time, you will need to sign up for the public beta first, which you would do by going to any web browser and typing in beta.apple.com. And then you've got this blue sign up button down at the bottom. Use your Apple ID, sign up using that button. And then when the beta is available to the public, it will show up on your phone. That said, if you do want to take part in the public beta, you just need to open settings, go into general, then software update. You'll see a section in there called beta updates. You'll see an iOS 26 public beta listed. Select that, give it a second to refresh, and then just follow the usual steps to update your iPhone. Okay, let's talk features. Clearly, the biggest change with iOS 26 is the visual overhaul that Apple is calling liquid glass, and it's been a pretty hot topic online ever since it was announced. We still don't know exactly how it's going to look in the final release come September, but I can tell you that Apple has already toned the effect down quite a bit. Personally, I think that's a shame, but it's probably in response to feedback from people who found it hard to see what they were doing, especially in places like Control Center. So if you're someone who finds the new look a bit much, there is actually a setting in accessibility that gives you more control. Head into settings, then accessibility, and then tap into display and text size. In here, you'll find an option called reduce transparency. When you enable that and go back into areas like control center, you'll notice that the liquid glass effect is almost entirely gone. It makes everything much easier to read and navigate, though, of course, you are losing that new visual style. So it is definitely worth knowing about if you're not a fan of the new look. A welcome addition to Apple Music is the ability to organize your playlists into folders. So if, like me, you've ended up with loads of playlists, some created by Apple, some by yourself, spread across all kinds of genres, you can now bring some order to the chaos. To do this, open the Music app, tap the Library button at the bottom of the screen, then go into Playlists. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see a plus button. Tap on that, and you'll have the option to either create a new playlist, or in this case, create a new folder. Give the folder a name, and it'll be created instantly then tap the back button to return to your main playlist view. If there's a playlist that you want to move into the folder that you just made, just long press on it, choose move to, then select your folder and tap move. And that's it, your playlist is now neatly stored away. iOS 26 definitely helps you stay more organized. And speaking of staying organized, especially when you're juggling meetings or creative projects on the go, that brings me to today's sponsor, Plaud, and their new note pin. It's a tiny wearable AI memory capsule that I've been using to take the pressure off note-taking. It records what's said, transcribes it using AI, and pulls out key points, summaries, and to-do lists, so I can stay present and still walk away with everything that I need. I've used it during client calls and when planning videos. I just talk, then check the summary later. It makes staying organized so much easier. And the summaries are genuinely helpful. Clean paragraphs, action points, speaker labels, and once it recognizes a voice, it remembers them next time, which is really impressive. I've mostly worn it clipped to my shirt, but there's also a lanyard and wristband. It's lightweight and subtle, so I don't have to hold my phone or worry about battery life. Because yes, phones can record, but they die quickly, get interrupted by calls and just feel awkward. Note pin solves all of that. 
It supports over 100 languages, cancels background noise, and gives you clear, accurate recordings. Everything stored securely with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, so nothing's sold or shared. Honestly, it's one of those gadgets that's just slotted into my routine perfectly. If you want to check out the Plaud Note pin and see how it could work for you, there's a link in the description. A really nice feature that's been added to iOS 26 is the ability to manually create a reminder using a shortcut rather than having to open the Reminders app itself. And there are a couple of different places that you can do this. The first is from Control Center. You'd swipe down to open Control Center, then long press for a second to enter Control Center edit mode. From there, press the add a control button at the bottom and search for the word reminder. You'll see a new option for the new reminder appear in the list. Just tap that to add it to your control center. Now, honestly, I was surprised that this didn't already exist. It's one of those features that I just assumed was already available in iOS 18, but it turns out this is new for iOS 26. The way it works is simple. You swipe into control center, tap new reminder, and a little window appears at the top of your screen. You can use the drop down to choose which list to add your reminder to, type in the reminder, add any relevant notes, choose a time or date using the calendar icon, assign a location using the compass button, or flag the reminder using the flag icon. So it gives you access to pretty much everything that you'd need to quickly create a proper reminder on the fly. The second place that you can set this up is using the action button if you've got a compatible iPhone. You'd go into settings, then action button, swipe across until you get to controls, tap choose a control, search for reminders and select new reminder from there. Once that's set up, you just long press the action button and the same window will appear to let you type in your reminder. Now, yes, technically you've been able to do this using Siri for a while and for some people that might be quicker, but there are definitely gonna be times where you don't want to talk to your phone, especially if you're in a quiet or public place. And this gives you a way to quickly type it in instead. It isn't a replacement for the full reminders app, but it's a really useful shortcut to have. And like I said earlier, I'm honestly just glad to see that it's finally been added in iOS 26. Here's a random bit of trivia for you. Did you know that the reason your iPhone snooze has always been set to nine minutes is actually a holdover from the days of mechanical clocks? Back then, it was apparently too difficult to engineer a precise 10 minute snooze because of the limitations of the gears and mechanisms. And the only realistic alternative would have been to make it slightly longer than 10 minutes. But sleep experts believe that would let people fall back into a deeper sleep, making it even harder to wake up again. I had no idea about any of that until I started researching it while putting this script together. But what I do know is that we're definitely no longer living in the era of mechanical clock limitations, especially not when we're talking about the iPhone. So it doesn't make much sense for us to still be stuck with a nine minute snooze. Thankfully, in iOS 26, Apple has finally addressed this. If you open the clock app and tap on alarms down at the bottom, you can either edit an existing alarm by tapping change or tap the plus button in the top right to create a new one. Scroll down to the bottom of the alarm settings and you'll now see a new option called snooze duration. You can choose anything from one minute all the way up to 15 minutes. So whatever works best for you in the morning, you're now free to pick it. I'm very fortunate to be an Apple Vision Pro owner and I can tell you that spatial photos and videos are one of the best things to enjoy on the Apple Vision Pro. Now you can't quite enjoy spatial photos on your iPhone with the same level of clarity that you get on the Vision Pro, but with iOS 26, you can get part of the way there thanks to a new feature that's been added to the Photos app. If you open the Photos app and head to your main library, then tap on a photo, you'll see a new button in the top right corner of the screen just underneath the ellipsis menu. It's the spatial button, and if you tap it, your phone will use artificial intelligence to break the photo up into layers and then reassemble it as a 3D style spatial scene. You can then move your phone around and see a three-dimensional effect that makes the photo feel more immersive. It definitely works better on some photos than others, but it's actually really impressive when it does work. And you can tap the same button again to switch it off if you want to, so there's no need to worry about damaging your photos by trying this out. The next time you're listening to a playlist in Apple Music on iOS 26, look out for the new button at the top of the screen. It's two overlapping circles, one in a lighter style, the other in a more bold style, and this is auto mix. The idea is that your iPhone will try to mix songs together like a DJ, using AI to analyze the audio and then time stretch or beat match them for smoother transitions. This isn't just auto-fade, where one song fades out while the next fades in. 
that can sound really bad if the songs have different pitches or BPMs. Automix goes a step further by intelligently matching those elements to make the blend sound much more natural. And when it works, it's amazing. Of course, a DJ would usually choose songs that naturally mix well together, while here you're relying on AI to do that for you with whatever's in your playlist. But in my experience, it actually does a really impressive job. I've had a lot of fun creating playlists with Automix in mind and being genuinely surprised by just how smooth some of the transitions have been. If you're one of the many, many people who didn't like the redesign of the Photos app in iOS 18, you should definitely take another look now in iOS 26, because in my opinion, Apple has done a really good job of keeping the useful new features that they added while fixing a lot of the frustrations that people had. So when you open the Photos app in iOS 26, the confusing split between library and collections is gone. Instead, you've got two clear buttons down in the bottom left corner, one for library, one for collections. When you tap into collections, it looks pretty similar to how it did in iOS 18, but if you tap the ellipsis menu in the top corner, you'll see a couple of new options. You can now choose how the collections look, including a show all and collapse all option, which gives you a bit more control. You can also reorder sections, just like you could before, although interestingly, you can't remove any of them this time around. You're stuck with all of the default options. That said, thanks to the ability to collapse and rearrange things, it is much easier now to get the app looking the way that you want it. Also, search has been made much easier to find. The little blue magnifying glass that used to blend into the background in iOS 18 is now a proper button in the bottom right corner, so it's really easy to locate and use whenever you need it. You should definitely make checking out the camera app one of the first things you do when you download iOS 26. If for no other reason, then you're probably going to spend a lot of time using it, and it's had a pretty significant redesign. When you open the camera app, you'll now see two main options down at the bottom of the screen, video and photo. But what's actually going on here is that this is one long carousel of shooting modes. All of the video options are to the left of video, all of the photo options are to the right of photo. The two labels just act as anchor points to help you more quickly navigate to the part that you need. So if you want to shoot in cinematic mode, for example, just swipe left from video. If you want portrait photos, you'd swipe right from photo. Then for each of the different modes, you can tap the little six dot grid icon at the top of the screen to open up all the relevant settings for that mode, which will appear down at the bottom. It takes a bit of muscle memory to get used to, but once you do, it is actually much quicker to find everything that you're looking for. Your image quality options will typically be in the top left corner. Your flash settings are usually just to the right of the options button. Your lens switching options appear like they always did. The front facing camera toggle is in the bottom right and you can access your photo library by tapping the preview in the bottom left. Previously in iOS 18, when you took a screenshot, you'd get a little thumbnail preview down in the bottom left corner of your screen. That's now been replaced in iOS 26 with a full screen preview, although just as a side note, you can get the old behavior back if you want. Just go into settings, then general, scroll down and tap on screen capture and toggle off full screen previews. But assuming you leave things as they are, now when you take a screenshot, it'll open up in full screen straight away and you'll have the usual tools up at the top to mark it up or share it directly. The bit that I really wanna show you though is what's new down at the bottom of the screen. If your phone supports Apple intelligence, you'll see a chat GPT option over on the left under ask. But even if you don't have Apple intelligence, you should still see a reverse image search option over on the right. This lets you quickly select a part of the screenshot with your finger, swipe up, and your iPhone will run a reverse image through Google. This is way easier than how it used to work, where you had to download the Google app or use a browser to do it manually. And Google's reverse image search is really useful. So the fact that it's now built right into the screenshot interface is a massive win. A feature that I would definitely recommend checking out in iOS 26 is the significant upgrade Apple has made to the phone app. If you head into settings, then scroll down and choose apps, then tap on phone, you'll see a new section called calls from unknown numbers. And there are a couple of really useful options here that you're gonna want to enable. The first is screen incoming calls. This allows your iPhone to intercept calls from unknown numbers and ask the caller to provide more information before it rings through to you. The idea here is that if it's an automated dialer or a spam call, your phone will hopefully be able to figure that out and stop the call before it even reaches you. The second option is move to unknown callers. 
What this does is take any missed calls or voicemails from numbers not saved in your contacts and automatically move them into the unknown callers list in the phone app. So if you're someone who gets a lot of spam calls or you've just had enough of picking up unwanted numbers, this is a really good way to filter them out. There's also another feature in here called detect call waiting. If you enable this, your phone will detect when you've been placed on hold and it will give you the option to leave the call temporarily. While you're off doing something else, your phone keeps your place in the queue and when a real person finally picks up on the other end, it plays a message to them asking them to wait while it notifies you to come back to the call. I've tried this out myself on a low stakes customer service call and it worked really well. I'm not sure I'd trust it just yet for anything really important like a doctor's appointment, but it's definitely one of those features that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. So there you go. Those are the 10 things that I think you should check out first if you've downloaded the public beta of iOS 26 to your device. And I will be covering iOS 26 in a ton of detail along with all of the other operating systems when they launch properly to the public around mid-September. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.